Do you want to contribute to Office 365 CLI? Are you stuck or not sure where to begin for writing tests for CLI commands? Then this video will help you to do just that. So before we write test for the command, um, let's go ahead and look into one of the commands that's already available and see how it is um, structured to better understand uh, the kind of tests we need to write for each command. Now, um, Office 365 CLI is a project where 100% coverage is uh, preferred for any of your pull requests to be approved. So um, we have to make sure that each and every bits um, in your code or any um, you know pathway for your code is being covered uh, using a test written for it. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, dissect this particular um, command called the Teams Channel List command, uh, which basically is one of the simplest command I can show you to better understand the concept. So the structure of the file is very similar. You've got channel list.ts and your test file would basically be .spec.ts, um, instruct.ts. Um, for our main function, you have a name function, which basically is um, the name of the command, the new command that you're writing for. You also have a description function, which basically is um, the description of the command. Uh, command action is where all the juicy bits happen, the, where the API call is being made um, to display information to you or to uh, run an operation for you uh, through using CLI. And um, this is where the entire thing uh, would happen. And um, this might change based on what kind of command you're working on, whether it's a post operation or a get operation or a patch, etc. Then you have a function called options, which is where you can pass your parameters. Um, this would also change based on what kind of parameters your command would be using. In our case, we have a mandatory uh, um, um, uh, argument called team ID. Validate is another function in every command, which validates if uh, there is a required parameter or if a parameter should be of a, of a particular format. For example, in our case, we have to check whether it's a valid GUID. You also have um, an, a function for command help, which basically is um, to uh, let the user um, understand how to use this particular command if he is passing a wrong argument or uh, uh, passing the name incorrectly. So that's basically the structure of a command in Office 365 CLI. Now let's jump on to um, the spec file for it, which is basically where all the tests are written. So let's jump into the test file um, for the previous command that we saw channel list.ts. We have channel list.spec.ts, um, which is the test file. And Office 365 CLI uses signon.js to create its spy stubs and mocks. Um, so this is how our file would look like. Um, it has um, the configuration in the beginning um, for your particular command. And then you will have tests written for each and every um, code path that we have in the command. Um, keep in mind that we have 100% coverage uh, in Office 365 CLI for, to, um, uh, to accept your pull request. So it is very important you cover all the different pathways of your command. Now, in this um, particular command, uh, what we uh, can um, take away from the existing uh, test written already in, uh, in this uh, project is to, um, you know, uh, you don't have to start from scratch. You can go ahead and look into a similar command that either lists or it removes or uh, gets a particular um, item or adds a particular item and go ahead and copy the spec and make uh, minimal changes or add extra test functions to cover all the different cases in your command. So that's exactly what we usually do when we have a new command in hand. The, so this section where you're configuring um, uh, your test uh, file is mostly very similar to um, uh, to the others already being done. Um, there might be few changes here and there. You might add maybe request dot um, 
post or request or delete uh, to restore things. But uh, other than that, there might be only a few different changes across this entire section. But of course, um, uh, this area would, uh, uh, would uh, I mean, the test that you write for each command may differ. But even then, I would say that there are a lot of tests uh, written, which is, um, uh, which is, uh, which should be there across uh, all the commands, like, um, for example, this one, it has a correct name. Now, it, every command has to have a correct name. Uh, it's also checking uh, whether you have uh, mentioned the correct uh, name of the command in your test file. Um, and then there are other bits like supports debug mode, which I cannot imagine if it would ever change. Um, and also having help uh, for your command, or it has help with examples. All these things are, you can just straight away go ahead and copy it uh, and make sure those bits of your command are already taken care of uh, unit test wise. Now what may change, oh I forgot about this one, uh, it has description is also another one that is um, that is uh, duplicated or uh, used across in every command so yeah you can just go ahead and copy it as is and you have basically covered um, the description side of things as well. So uh, with that in mind, there are a few um, changes you may have to make, for example, validating your command. Now this would be different for each and every command. In our case, we know that team ID is a required field and it also has to have a certain uh, pattern, like it should be a GUI ID. So this is what the two validations that we have done here. So if you just correlate these things, you can understand how uh, test and, you know, and writing tests for each function is so if you go ahead and come to our validate function here there are the two uh, pathways we have whether checking whether team ID is present or not um, also whether checking uh, checking it whether it's a valid GUI ID or not so these two things are being captured in these tests uh, validation if the team ID is not a valid GUI ID and also if it is not provided then you basically have to throw an error so those things are now taken care of Another um, validation that happens is you have a correct input. So yeah, it's probably a duplicate, but yeah, it doesn't hurt to add. Anyway, um, so uh, another uh, so uh, another thing that we have to notice is writing tests for your main function, which is um, which is something that's going to change for every command. And yes, based on the complexity of your command action, uh, you can have uh, few to many uh, uh, tests written to make sure that every bit of this is covered. So you have, um, if you look at this one, you, you know that you have a pathway where uh, JSON uh, um, output is uh, option output option is being provided where you are basically um, uh, have to print out or show all the items that are retrieved by this API. Uh, another pathway is if that's not provided, then I mean the output option is not provided with JSON, then you can just display ID and display name of uh, all the information that is uh, being um, given by the API. Another pathway is if we've got um, it in the WordPress mode, um, or uh, another pathway is if all this um, API endpoint fails, then you have to have some sort of an error um, display mechanism. So this is a very simple scenario. There might be more complex scenario, but um, just to give you an idea of how we should be writing tests. So all these things should be um, written uh, with tests so that uh, every pathway is uh, already covered. Now, let's see the first one here. So I think these bits are the ones that will take care of all that. The first one is um, without debug mode, um, how would it uh, give you um, information back? So we have now a sign on stub. Um, feel free to go ahead and check out signon.js to understand what stubs are, uh, what calling a fake function is, or to understand how spice work for, um, I might give you a quick overview. Stubs are functions with pre-programmed behavior. In our case here, we have a stub where we are calling a very fake function, which would um, call an API for this request. Uh, all these things are 
are taking care for you. You just have to pause your endpoint and uh, predict the behavior of what that endpoint does, which basically is us passing uh, some values here um, and resolving that function. And then we say that, hey, once we have uh, a command instance, which is uh, uh, going to say that uh, in my command instance, I'm saying this is my team ID. In that case, uh, my spy spies again are basically something that would record arguments and return values for all the calls made by the stub. Um, so the spy would go ahead and say, "Hey, once this is passed, uh, this is passed, and this information is passed, what our command does is after getting this information back, it would display the ID and the display name. That's exactly what we are doing in our function." as well this is how it displays information um, if the output JSON is not provided so that's basically it and we say <coughs> we call it done another option is again the debug mode or not we just have to make sure that um, debug option in it is true and it will be very similar to what we have done earlier and another uh, test written here is the JSON output mode to cover this section of the um, uh, command, uh, which basically would mean that um, this uh, the stub remains very same, very similar to the earlier one, but the information that we get back, for example, we have got the output JSON also passed into the command instance and the information that the uh, spy would um, record would be the entire value that is being uh, given by the stub. So it does not do that um, filtering or um, not filtering exactly, but being mindful of the properties being passed out. It would just give out everything that is given out by the um, stub. So that takes care of this part of the function, uh, which basically is checking if there is an output option being given for JSON. Now, uh, the last one that we need to look into is to make sure that error handling is done properly as well. So that is the next function. So um, what, he, uh, what we do here is the stub basically would say, hey, um, just reject the function altogether. So what happens here is this, um, this call is rejected and it goes straight away to um, error um, being shown to us. And we are predicting here again, we are predicting and pre-programming the, the behavior saying an error has occurred. Now this would, um, this is only faking it, right? So um, in our special, um, in our real scenario, it would be a, an error thrown by the API or something that will be displayed, but we are making sure that it's discovered by giving our, our own pre-programmed rejection message. And uh, we'll go ahead and assert that as the error message being displayed as well. So this is how we can write test. Um, and um, this is how we have to think when we are writing tests to make sure that every bit uh, of code that you have, every pathway or um, every action that you take uh, within your uh, command action is uh, completely, completely translated into different tests that you write here. So um, go ahead and let us know what you think about what we should do next uh, in our videos. Uh, you can go ahead and add your discussions here in github.com slash pnp slash office 365 hyphen cli slash discussions or open up an issue and we'll take care of that. Thanks for watching.